John's focus was to weed out fraud and abuse. And you'll remember that he coined the term about our jurisdiction, if it moves its energy, if it doesn't, it's commerce. We had the world. <laughs> the people who worked with him, his staff and for him, were fiercely loyal. He didn't demand loyalty, but he sure did create it. And I think that's because he could see others as the kind of multifaceted, genuine person that he was, where he thought that it could make a difference. We have come together today as fellow Americans to celebrate uh, the life of one of the greats. Debbie, thank you for giving me the honor of uh, being part of this today. It means a lot to me to, uh, to be here to honor my friend, the gentleman from Michigan, the dean of the House, the chairman. In the legislative record uh, during his decades in Congress that may never be matched. He was a great legislator. Not just because he was a shrewd negotiator, or a master tactician, or a hard-driving son of a gun. He was all of those things. Uh, but John Dingell was a great legislator. And above all else, because he was a great American. Like many of the freshmen at the time, I saw him as larger than life. He was imposing, yes, intimidating. He was, as John Lewis has said, chairman John Dingle, seemingly unapproachable. At the time, it made me think of an old country ballad sung by Tennessee Ernie Ford. It told of a giant of a man who held up the buckling timber in a collapsing mine, allowing all others in that mine to escape. Big John, that miner was called. John Dingle was to us freshmen, our very own Big John. And Fred, as you pointed out, Republicans alike. He once gaveled a committee meeting to a German right before he was about to lose the vote, declaring, you may have the votes, but I've got the gavel. <laughs> and more often than not, he ultimately got the votes, too. He never minced words. He never held back. Sincere, earnest, determined, courageous, persuasive, principled, indefatigable, at times acerbic, say amen. amen. <laughs> the voices you just heard are those who knew that personally. What do you say, don't you think we owe it to John? Let's be honest. One of the reasons none of us would have missed this is this is the only time in our entire lives in public service that we were in the same room with John Dingle and got the last word. <laughs> John Dingle was just about the best doer in the history of American public life. Since 1955, that's a long time ago, until he left, he had a hand in just about every important contribution to following our <coughs> that followed our founder's admonition to form a more perfect union. And he was good about doing this when he was in the minority as well as when he was in the majority.